Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some more ridiculous and out of control scenes from my 600 pound life. We're going to be taking a look at scenes of ridiculous behavior as well as egregious eating. What sort of fast food establishments will they go to today? Stick around to find out. You like how I bleeped all those out? <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry if I sound sick. I'm still dealing with that. When you have a kid in school, they constantly bring home illness. It's annoying. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. My life is unbearable because of my size. Okay, so we're starting the day off by removing an oxygen tank from our face. Everything about this life is hard. Yeah, that does seem hard. How could you even fall asleep like that, dude? I could not fall asleep like that. Looking like freaking Bane over there, bruh. You just recently came to the darkness. But I was born in the darkness. Molded by it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I always love that scene, dude. I love the part where Bane starts talking about literally anything. It's like, you were a bat in the cave. There was nothing more you could be. <laughs> like, just the way he talks, man. I want a bedtime story read by Bane. Okay, is that too much to ask? Once upon a time. Oh, there was a bat. <laughs> we must stop the bat, man. <laughs> Sorry. Are you about to wreak chaos upon the city right now? Where I can't even function on my own like I need. I literally couldn't sleep with that thing on my face, dude. I swear. Anymore. Kane is so out of shape that she needs an oxygen machine just to make it through the night. Is that how you put that? She's so out of shape she needs oxygen? I guess that's one way of putting it. And her day does not get any easier from here. These days, even standing is a painful thing for me now. Ah, oh, jeez. The worst days, I can't get out of the bed. I don't make it to the bathroom. When I can get up, I have to have help. Oh, no, you don't make it to the bathroom? Oh, no. My goodness, Kane. She is talking about how hard it is for her to simply move, and you can tell from the footage that she's not overselling it. Something has to change, because she'll be bedridden before long if this keeps up. That's what my mission... Dude, she's dang near bedridden right now. She already has to lean on that other dude to help pull her out of the bed. She is very close. And focus goes to right at that moment when I can go out into the den and start my day with my first meal. Oh, no. They do this on purpose. They edit them like struggling all crazy. And then they have the scene where they're like, and then I'm ready for my next meal. The point of that dialogue that they always use is to show that they are struggling, but they still want to use the substance that they're addicted to. Let's see what Kane considers a typical meal. So I use the last bit of energy. In okay, so you have multiple children bring you the fold out table. And me to move to the couch. Okay, I swear that table had better not be full of food by the time we're done with this, dude. That's a large table uh, for one person to eat off of. You don't realize that, but that's like actually one of those 14 foot tables. She's just like 12 feet wide. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is that okay? Can we make those kind of, no, we can't do that. Okay, I'm sorry. And start eating. Huh. Oh no. I swear I saw some cinnamon buns. Uh, well, now that's different. Corn dogs are- No, no, get those cinnamon buns out of here. They're not a healthy choice under any- What is happening? No. Any circumstance, but it's especially bad when you're having them for breakfast. And Cinnamon buns for breakfast, bro, is the worst idea on earth, dude. A cinnamon bun is like donuts bastard cousin. Stay away from that one, too. <laughs> She's not just having one or two. She's got four- Okay, she does have four corn dogs. I am alarmed at that, but I'm very alarmed at the cinnamon buns. Right there, along with some cinnamon buns. On yeah, that's really driving me crazy just looking at it. On the side. So I constantly have a craving. What are you doing? You're putting maple syrup on corn dogs. All right, now we're taking obesity to new heights, dude. I've never seen that. You know when people just start putting sweet stuff on stuff that totally doesn't need it and it's completely ridiculous? Like, here's my eggs in the morning. I like to pour a bunch of syrup on top. Like, what are you doing? You know, it's this drive in me that I can't control. But I know it's taking over my life to the point of where I can barely get... Ew, what were you doing touching that corn dog all weird? Taking over my life. Right here, watch her hand. To the point of where I can barely... Ew. Sorry, but why are you touching the corn dog? Gross. Get around. And just be... It's gross to touch it, but not to eat it. 
If I think it's gross to touch it, I'm definitely not eating it. Because there wasn't enough calories in front of her, Kane decided to add some syrup to the corn dogs. It that's some egregious behavior right there. It's ridiculous. A lot of people put ketchup or mustard on their burger. I just put a few spoonfuls of sugar. You know, old school. Because, you know, why not? Even when I'm full. I've never seen anybody put maple syrup on a corn dog, dude. That's ridiculous. I don't want to stop because... The way she I eats. I that joy that food gives me. And I'm losing... What are you doing? All right, so she was just putting some jelly up under her sausage McMuffin or whatever, sausage muffin sandwich. More of my abilities every single day. Corn dogs and cinnamon rolls weren't enough because she somehow got her hands on a sausage biscuit. What? The way that she handles food, I don't like it. And decided to add jelly to it. And ladies and gents, I can't emphasize jelly and a sausage McBiscuit. Is this enough? This is her breakfast. It's not even 10 a.m. yet. How could she live like this? I just tried to escape. All right, what do we got here now? A bunch of chicken wings? Escape my pain and guilt. The Don't bring her the whole tray. The only way I knew how to, to try and bring myself happiness. Oh my goodness. The family has prepared a whole lot of chicken for dinner, but I have a hunch that all this food isn't going to be evenly distributed among everyone at home. Okay, so everybody else has like a regular size plate, like this plate right here. And then this is her plate, right? I'm sure that everybody's going to eat these wings from these trays. They just put it all in front of her to make it look like she was going to eat it all. And that got worse when I was 35 because- Was that a bag of dog food that you just handed him? No, I'm just kidding. I lost my mom on top of all of this. So- Okay, well that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. When I lost her, it was the lowest point I'd been in my life. Yep, that was- I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that if your mother were alive, she would not want you to live like this. It's a safe bet. I mean, just look at how- What the heck even is that, bro? What is that, like some nachos with cheese sauce on top? And all of the nachos and cheese are sitting atop a pile of wings or something. Honestly, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Look what that plate is. So I just ate to try to lose the pain. And even today, it still hurts. And all right, so now we've removed the trays of chicken and you're just eating from a regular plate. Okay. I'm not going to get over her death. Of course. Any of our loved ones would want us to do better for ourselves after they passed. So... I know it's easier said than done, but taking good care of ourselves is kind of like an homage to them. Like I said, that's like way easier said than done, obviously. If somebody that you love passes, dude, it's going to be hard to come out of that. We're not just talking about chicken here, as she also seems to have a good portion of nacho chips with queso topped all over. With, with what? Hold on now. Hold on. Say that again. What With what? Chips with queso. Top with queso. <laughs> you put all that accent on it. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, man? Can I get a um, burrito, perhaps? Um, maybe I could get some nachos. Like, <laughs> I love when people say everything else all white sounding, and then they get to the Spanish word and put all this accent on it. I love that. They even put a little effect on the screen. Some nacho chips of guests. Spanish intensifies. <laughs> so, topped all over the whole plate, but not James B. All right, can I get the two slices of Steakhouse Premium Pancake? Can I get two orders of that, please? Can I get the game day family feast? Uh, can I get the original French? Can I get, can I get, can I get? Everybody orders like that. Toast and a slice of, uh, let me get a slice of ham. Two of them. Okay. And to absolutely nobody's surprise, James' order doesn't sound all that healthy. I'm always ready to eat. I just feel like the food. I'm always ready to eat. Do you carry a fork and knife in your pocket? They have these old like Swiss army knives that have like a fork and a spoon on there. Do you carry one of those around with you at all times? I'm always ready to eat, dude. Just say the word. Ring the dinner bell, boom, out comes a fork instantly. You're like hanging out with this dude. Man, it's a nice day, huh, James? I was thinking we could stop and maybe get something to eat. Something to eat? Oh, hell yeah, let's go to the restaurant. Earwigs. What? Huh? I was talking about I want to get something to earwig with. Um, what? <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. Let's be eating. Something in my head is telling me. Oh my goodness, that's a nice camera angle. To eat the food. Well, that's not good. James clearly has no control. Okay, so we'll put the camera down at crotch level, and then I'm going to sit up here at eye level and interview you, and you're going to look at me while the camera's down there looking up at your crotch. Okay. Food just takes away the pain. It takes away all the guilt. It takes away... It takes away the guilt? What did you do, James? Food takes away all the shame. It takes away all the guilt. What'd you do, James? Why do you feel guilty? Tell us. Tell us all right now. I'm not judging you. <laughs> I wish I could wash away the shame of all my horrible previous actions by eating a sandwich. If only it were that easy, James. If only it were that easy. Oh, wait, is it? 
will all this pain go away if I just start overindulging in food? Okay, all right, I'm starting to come around. No, I'm just kidding. Is that why I've been suffering my whole life? Because I haven't had a proper piece of deep fried chicken. Away all the issues. Takes away all the issues. Hold on, let's go back and take a look at his spread real quick. All right, man. Um, oh my goodness, it all looks the same. Whatever's on the left looks just like what's to the right of it. Like, whatever this sandwich is, looks like a more burnt version of this sandwich. <laughs> and then you got like some onion rings with barbecue sauce right here. And then you've got some other kind of like sandwich here, some sausage links over here, some bacon down in the bottom right where my face is likely blocking it. All right, man, this is quite the spread. It takes away all the guilt. It takes away all the issues. It doesn't take away anything. It just takes me to another place. Takes you to another place. All right, so this uh, food is having some sort of psychoactive effect on you. Okay. Some people use mind-bending substances to explore altered states of consciousness. James eats fried chicken. Um, oh, man, all the colors, man. It's taking me to a different place. Yeah, the different place it's taking you to is the ER, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, see how the screen's starting to fade out wide again? He's like, it takes me to a different place. Okay, so that might actually be more than just a meal for an entire family. I mean, just look at all that food. Those are massive Tupperwares. And eat... What is that thing on the left? Each one of them is loaded... Well, that's clearly grilled sandwiches or whatever, but... ...the brim with unhealthy, fatty options. It gives me everything I want. But there's nothing worse than coming to an end of a meal, so... I'm pretty stuffed when I'm at the end of my meal. I'm like, all right, man, get this away from me. When breakfast is over, then I'm already thinking about lunch. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, you'll see a common theme on my 600-pound life is just an incredible overconsumption of food. The only genetic factor to this is where the people store the adipose tissue. Genetically, you may store it on your butt or in your gut or in your leg or whatever. Genetically, I only gain weight right there on the side of my neck. No, but that would be weird. What if all of your weight gain was just in one little spot on your body, like your forearm or something? Wouldn't that be weird? Then you'd really have to keep your weight in check, right? Your forearm just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and everyone's like, what the heck? What's happening? Shut up. I just need to lose weight. <laughs> Shut up. I do get full, but it's temporary. Dude, you're... Well, when you're eating that kind of food, man, you're always going to be hungrier and hungrier. Breakfast would be enough to feed me for a week. We've never really seen any of these people start the day off with a healthy breakfast. Sometimes it includes elements of a healthy breakfast, like eggs and toast and other stuff like that. But then there's just all this other crazy stuff too, like cinnamon buns and whatnot. And you're already thinking about lunch. This guy has a serious problem. Well, at least he's not thinking about breakfast the night before, right? He's like, when I'm at dinner, I'm thinking about breakfast. Although I think there are people like that on this show. Crazy. Thanks for help. Watch out, you gotta hold it from the bottom. It. What we got today? You got some chicken. Yeah, I appreciate you guys, man. Unsurprisingly, James has a whole network of enablers that allow him to order. A whole network of enablers. Yeah, this wouldn't be possible without them, although he could just door dash all this stuff, honestly. Absurd portions, like what we're seeing. And what we got over here. You can help me open them up, please? Sometimes I feel like the world has just pushed me away. I think you have pushed yourself away. You have added an extra layer of insulation to your body that's pushing everyone away from you and keeping them at arm's length, not just physically, but metaphorically. I've talked about this before. Maybe one of the aspects of this is that people don't think that they're worthy of love because they have such low self-esteem, so they're putting a barrier between themselves and everyone around them. Sorry, now I'm trying to get all psychological on that ass. And because of that, I resort to food. Okay, let's be fair for a second here. Not all of this food is for James. However, we can see that he has two plates. And he well, yeah, it's not all for James, but you know, he's clearly going to eat a lot of it because he is extremely obese. As we can see on this show, it requires a lot of effort to maintain morbid obesity. But you didn't have to watch this to know that. You know that if you're like 600 pounds, just to maintain that, you have to eat like 8,000 calories a day. To continue to grow, you have to eat even more than that. Some of the larger people in the fat activist movement are dang near as big as the people on my 600 pound life. So as soon as they put the camera down, talking about the systemic oppression and how it's genetics and all that, they instantly started eating to maintain and grow their weight. So that's funny to think about. It's funny to think about how much time of your day is spent eating and then how much time of your day is spent making TikToks about how it's not the eating. I'm not mad at you. I'm not judging you. I'm here to help you. But it's really ridiculous and silly. It's very silly. He's clearly eating far more than his fair share. I'm loving the food. These ribs, 
on go. But all right, this is me in post editing. I'm listening to this again, and I swear he says on God. I swear his voice quivers when he says on God. These ribs on God. Is that what he just said? <laughs> Did he just say these ribs on God? <laughs> what? I'm loving the food. These ribs on God. I think he said I'm loving the food. These ribs on God. I do love a good rib myself, right? Who doesn't? But I know at the end of the day, I have a food at it. I don't really eat pork too much anymore just because like the way that they raise them and stuff, I'm not into it at all. But back when I did eat pork, man, ribs will make you freaking tired. You eat these ribs and you get the itis, as they call it, where you get all tired. Like you just you eat a bunch of pork and they're just like, oh God, oh, screw my whole life. Oh, oh, and then you're just like tired and laying there and you feel all out of it because of all the pork, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why eating copious amounts of pork ribs makes you tired and gives you the itis, as it's called. Are any of you familiar with the itis? Everything is pertaining to my weight. It's always pertaining to my weight. And you can Everything is about my weight. It's always pertaining to my weight. Well, you know, you spend a significant amount of the day eating, so. You can hear it all right there. James' life has become strictly above food. All in all, James has a serious eating problem. He does. And then the whole screen just went white. Aw, oh, man, dang it. Rest in peace, James. I'm sorry, that was like totally in poor taste. I'm really sorry. The screen turned white, so I'm like, yo, dang it, he went to heaven. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't make those stupid jokes, you idiot. It's not funny. Sorry. And Dr. Now has his work cut out for him on this one. And that's about all we have time for today. What was your favorite scene? My favorite part was when that lady was spreading jelly on her sausage and egg muffin sandwich. What the heck? Who does that? At various times, we're going to see repeats throughout the show because Plot Twist has done like bits and pieces of the same episodes. They don't always show the same clips. Like for instance, they'll show some parts of Dolly, but like on a different episode, they'll show slightly different parts of the Dolly episode. So it's always a little different, but we'll see some reoccurring characters from time to time. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend. Please click the like button. One like equals one mustache Komen. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.